Welcome, and in this video we'll try to understand how QTP identifies different objects. We need that because we will use them to create our own scripts from scratch, and we won't be using the recording run. As you can see, uh, QTP, Quick Test Professional, records a certain action. Then it can play back those actions. So how exactly does QTP define those objects? As you can see, if I go back to my previous script with the QTP variables, I have recorded some tests, uh, navigated to Facebook, and entered some text. So the way QTP identifies the objects, the way it does it, it does all these after recording. It does all these automatically on the object repository. Now, what is an object repository? The object repository is nothing but, uh, you can call it the memory the memory of the identified objects. If you're going to memorize, say, 10 different phone numbers from your cell phone's phone book, all those numbers you would be storing in a certain part of your brain or memory. You'd store the name of the number, let's say James, and then James's number. Um, so 347 blah 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 dot dot dot. So you are storing a name and the value, the name and the value. So let's try to understand this concept in Quick Test Professional. So in details, let's understand this concept of identifying objects. So QTP stores everything, all the object properties and values in the object repository. And this is the object repository icon. This is the shortcut. You can also get to it from resources and you can click on object repository. So for now, let's click on the shortcut. Use the shortcut for object repository. Now you'll see this window coming up. This is the QTP object repository. Now whatever we have recorded, it will store that information, all that information, in the object repository. And we have this search browser. We also have this page, the checkpoints, and everything. Let's try to understand the simple concept of how QTP identifies an object. How did it identify my browser and Facebook? How did it get identified? How do I know it is a browser? Um, that is because of this symbol. This blue sign, the blue planet sign, tells me that this is a browser. So if I click on that, if I double click on that, I can see that this name is search and in the object properties and class is browser and it created all these values. So in this case, there's no value except the class. Class is browser, and the name is search. There's also, we have a creation time of zero, and you don't, you don't really need that for now. These are the properties and values of this objects. Let's click on this Facebook and this is a page. The name is Facebook and the class is page. And there are different values and we don't have these values because the class and name are enough. So QTP identifies these objects by their name, their value, and their properties. You can see the same for all of these and then Let's look at the checkpoint, as you can see. 
So the first checkpoint we provided was the email address we provided already exists. So the first checkpoint we provided we, was the email address we provided already exists. So this is the checkpoint and checkpoint was identified. The class is checkpoint and here are the properties and values. Inner text is a type of property. Inner text is something that exists within an object. So the inner text of this checkpoint is the type of the property is inner text. The value of the property is this email you have entered dot dot dot. So property and value, this is how QTP identifies an object. Let's try to explain that a bit further. So let's imagine a bicycle. Well, imagine a bicycle. Although my, my drawing is bad, I'll still try to draw a bicycle in here. Just one moment. Bear with me, here I have my second tire. I can put a seat here. Like I said, it is a very bad, bad drawing, but it's a virtual drawing. and It'll work. You know, I can also, I can also use a picture, a bicycle picture. We can use Google image, go to Google image and just search for a bicycle. Let's say, I'm just trying to find a decent one. All these bicycle pages are coming up, which I, I don't need, just a picture. Okay. So if you imagine a bicycle, a bicycle has different types of properties. By that I mean it has tires, it has the seat, it also has these handles, these are the properties of the bicycle. Okay, so properties, type of properties of bicycle. If you imagine a human being, if I type a human being, A human being has different properties such as hands, legs, mouth, and so on. These are the type of properties and the value, the values of these properties are the types of things that can be performed through those properties. So for example, if hand is a property, what are the things we can do with it? We can, we can hold things, we can eat. These are the values of the hand property. So, um, for example, what can we do with legs? Legs, what can we do with legs? We can walk, run, we can kick, kick enemies. These are the values of the leg property. So if I go back to bicycle, the same thing for bicycle, what can be done with tires? The bike can be run through those tires at, say, 10 miles per hour. The seat can be used by a person. Someone can sit on it. These are the properties and values. The, case, the same concept is in QTP. QTP, as I showed you, identifies in the object repository the objects by the properties and the values of those properties. So as we go along, 
you'll get a better idea of the concept, but for now, try to understand what is a value and what is a property. Let's close this for now. How will we know, or how will we understand, and what will we know is the property and value of an object? That is why we have this, the, the object spy, the man with the hat, the little blue hat. This is the guy that will help us to identify and understand the values and properties of an object. So we can write them within our codes without even recording them, and we can take full control of our, of our scripts. So let me just get a quick overview. If I go to if I go to google.com, now I have different types and kinds of objects here. This is an object, this is an object here. The I'm feeling lucky is an object. The, <laughs> I don't know what it is, I've never tried it. This is a search button, and these are the links that we can use different types of objects. If we click on, let's get a, a, a quick snapshot. If we click on objects by, then we have to click on this hand sign, this hand sign here, if you see that, cl then click on that and click on any object, click on anything. Let's, let's click on this, I'm feeling lucky on this object. Let's try to understand what this object is all about. As we can see, the properties and values of this object, property class of this object is web button. It has a HTML tag. These are some unique properties of this object compared to other project, other objects. The main property value is I'm feeling lucky. So the name, the name property value is I'm feeling lucky. This is how QTP identifies objects and this is how we can understand properties and values of an object. In the next video, we will start writing our own codes from scratch. We will start writing descriptic programming and use properties and values by using objects by, and we'll also have a quick snapshot of output value in QTP HP Quick Test Professional. Thank you.